Not everything can be explained by science. Some things baffle experts in all fields. And these are some of the more curious. These are the 20 scariest cursed objects scientists still can't explain. Number 20. Annabelle Doll In 2014, an American horror movie called Annabelle would be released. It was the story of a doll that was possessed by a demonic spirit. Sounds like a regular enough scary movie, but this one actually was based on a true story. God sent this cursed object to punish humanity. The story began back in 1970 when a young woman received a Raggedy Ann doll from her mother as a gift for her birthday. She put the doll on her bed, but noticed that the doll would often change positions. Sometimes its legs would be crossed or it would be lying down. Then things began to get weirder as notes began to appear in the house, written on parchment paper. Paper, despite the fact that there was no such paper in her house. The notes would read things like, help me, help us. Then the doll began turning up all over the house and one day looked as if it was even bleeding. This is all a little bit creepy, isn't it? As if dolls weren't already at least a little bit terrifying. Then it really went weird. One of the woman's housemates woke up with the doll staring at him and feeling as though he were being strangled. He had deep scratches all over his upper body. This was getting to be too much for the young people and they decided, obviously, that they needed to have a seance, as one does. That's where they met Annabelle Higgins. This was the spirit of a seven-year-old girl who had lived on the property when she died, but the doll kept doing scary things and it seemed as though there was some malevolent force at play. This is when paranormal investigators got involved and decided that they should take the doll. They then drove it home, sprinkling it with holy water the whole time, apparently to calm it down. The doll is now kept in a locked display case in an occult museum, where it's very clearly labeled, WARNING, POSITIVELY DO NOT OPEN. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. God sent this cursed object scientists still can't explain, or at least that's what a lot of people are saying. On the left you can see the book that we're talking about, and on the right you can see the owners, Ed and Lorraine Warren, legendary collectors of all things creepy. It's said that this book is kept in their collection, but it's actually locked away in a room the public has no access to. The creepiest thing is, nobody knows why the Warrens were so scared of the thing, considering the horrors they are willing to put out on show. The fact they deem this thing to be too dangerous is horrifying just to think about. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below using the hashtag sweet topic. Number 19. Cursed Mirror at Myrtle's Plantation in the former plantation and now historic house of the Myrtles Plantation are apparently more spooky goings on than anywhere else in America. This haunted place of places is located in St. Francisville in Louisiana and it's notorious for all the reported creepy stories that have long been associated with the property itself. It's no small wonder that really the site of historical atrocities against people might wind up being a bit tad haunted now is it? Although there are numerous stories about ghosts and haunted happenings in the Myrtles Plantation, the one that's most famous, or even infamous, is that of the Cursed Mirror. This story goes that the former owner of the house, a woman by the name of Sarah Woodruff, along with her two daughters, were poisoned by a slave and then allegedly trapped inside the mirror. Of course. This is perfectly likely. Anyway, people who have visited the home claim to have seen handprints, strange markings, and even figures who are dressed in historic costume within the mirror. There's no other way for handprints or marks to find their way onto a mirror, so it must be haunted, right? Definitely. Number 18. Screaming Skull of Burton Agnes Hall Legends of Screaming Skulls are a particular favorite for old stately homes in England. One such tale comes from Burton Agnes Hall in Yorkshire. 
This place is an old manor home with a haunted history. In 1620, a young woman by the name of Catherine, known as Anne Griffith, would die in the house and is believed by many to have haunted the Queen's state bedroom. She had watched the house being built and had been fixated on how it would be the most beautiful house ever to be constructed. When the place was almost finished, Anne was visiting somewhere about a mile away, but as she returned, she was attacked and robbed. She was then taken to Burton Agnes, but then died a few days later. Then that's where it gets creepy, because before she died, Anne begged her sisters to sever her head and preserve it in the hall forever. You know, nothing odd about that. But when she died, she was buried in the churchyard. Then the ghostly stuff began and scared everyone half to death. This was when her sisters remembered her dying wish, so they went to the vicar who eventually agreed that her skull may be dug up and taken into the hall. So her cranium would be placed in Burton Agnes Hall, and apparently as long as it remains there and is left undisturbed, Anne's ghost actually stays peaceful. Whenever anyone has tried to remove it, the ghost starts up with noise, hence the screaming and a whole lot of upheaval. The skull is still there even to this day, hidden inside of one of the walls, keeping the ghost at bay. Number 17. The Hands Resist Him Painting Back in 1972, an artist named Bill Stoneham created a painting named The Hands Resist Him. He had based this artwork on a photograph of himself at age 5. It depicts a young boy and what appears to be a doll standing in front of a glass door. There are lots of hands pressed against the windows behind the boy in the image, and the artist says that the door is the boundary between the fantasy world and reality, and the doll is a guide that will escort the boy through the door. Back along this painting, was put up for sale on eBay with a description that made every suggestion that the painting was haunted, and then of course, in the way of such internet-y things, it became a meme, and thus the urban legend of this haunted artwork was born. Just how haunted or not that the piece may be is up for debate, but would you want this hanging on your wall, even if it isn't going to do ghostly things? Go on and make things go bump in the night. It's still super creepy, don't you think? Number 16. Haunted Wedding Dress A tragic love story and a haunted wedding dress are the stuff of some of the best sorts of ghost stories, just like being huddled around the fireplace in Victorian times, getting scared silly by candlelight. So the story of this haunted frock goes like this. All the way back in 1849, a young woman named Anna Baker, who was from a wealthy family in Pennsylvania, fell in love with an iron worker. But her father forbade her from marrying the man that she loved because he was of a lower class socially. Fathers could do this sort of thing, and shame and such were very real for women who had no real power of their own at that time. Anna had apparently already had her dress made, seems unlikely given all the being forbidden from marrying stuff and whatnot, but you know, that's how the tale is told, so we'll move on. And that added an extra tragic facet to Anna's suffering. So she was very heartbroken that she never married, and then died having never wed in 1914. Anna's house is apparently now a museum, and her wedding dress is on display at a glass case. People believe that it is cursed, as there are many reports of it moving about inside the cabinet. Does this mean that it's cursed though, or perhaps it's just a drafty old house? I'll leave it up to you to decide. Number 15. The Anguished Man Painting up next, we have one of the most haunted paintings in the world, allegedly. The Anguished Man was believed to have been painted by an extremely disturbed person who said to have mixed his oil paints with his own blood while creating the piece. Several strange phenomena since I look back. It has been causing noise blades in people. The legend goes that he took his own life immediately upon completion of the work, and that may be the case, and it is a very sad story indeed, but doesn't immediately lead to curses and hauntings and such. But the current owner of the painting is utterly convinced that he heard strange and spooky noises and saw all manner of horrifying things all while this painting was hanging on the wall of his bedroom. Now call me old fashioned, but if you put a very unsettling image of a person which is actually called the anguished man on your bedroom wall, do you even expect to sleep soundly? Come on now, genius. Number 14. Busby Stoop Chair 
Is this the most haunted chair in the UK? Well, maybe, but there are surprisingly many contenders for that particular title. This cursed furniture has been accused of being the cause of many an untimely death, the first of which was a murder victim that started his whole hoo-ha off in the first place. Back in 1702, a man by the name of Thomas Busby, who evidently had some anger issues, would kill his father-in-law because he sat in his chair without permission. Busby was sentenced to death, but before before his execution would be granted one last wish. This guy chose to sit in his chair to have a last drink. He really loved that chair, I suppose. Anyway, while he was having his very last sit down, he cursed the chair for good measure, declaring that death shall come swiftly to anyone that dares to sit in my chair. Well, it's said that the chair has indeed claimed many lives since then, but nowadays it hangs from the ceiling in the museum in which it's on display. You know, just to make sure that nobody else sits in it. That would be a litigious nightmare. Number 13. Cursed Mori Warrior Masks the Maori people of New Zealand have a rich and fascinating history. Their culture of storytelling, artwork, and hunting is bound up in the handed-down crafts of their ancestors. Carvings like these masks were made to represent ancestors or gods, and were not intended to be worn, but rather to adorn the homes or even mark places as a point of reverence. There is a belief that if the maker of a mask were to die violently, their spirit could not reach Hawaii, then they may possess objects or people. The objects that they made were most likely a place for a spirit to take up residence. Number 12. Hope Diamond it seems as though fabricating a tale of a mysterious curse is a great publicity stunt, one that can likely as not increase interest and as a result the value of whatever you're promoting. The Hope Diamond may be one such cursed object, although perhaps fabricating the story of a curse is sometimes enough to invoke one to possess your thing. The Hope Diamond has been kicking around fancy circles for hundreds of years, making its way through the hands of kings for a couple of hundred before landing in the care of Henry Philip Hope, a diamond collector. That's right, Columbo. That's how it got its name. Then a bunch of ill-conceived financial decisions led to the Hope Diamond eventually being put up for sale and still not being able to save the erstwhile owners from bankruptcy. This is basically where the story of the curse would originate. The financial pages of the New York Times in 1908 posited the idea, and as is often the way, other newspapers picked up on the story and elaborated somewhat. So the curse then grew into something which could not only bring about financial doom, but also divorce, and then it was even blamed for the executions of Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette. Obviously, having a dangerous curse does nothing for the monetary value of your diamond, and the Hope Diamond was then sold at a bargain price to diamond dealers, eventually ending up at Cartier in Paris. Pierre Cartier really leaned into the story of the Hope Diamond and managed to imbue it with a sense of romance and mystery, along with its dangerous curse. The next owners were one of the richest families in America, and they were not immune to its curse. Their 10-year-old son was killed when he was hit by a car, and the diamond eventually pawned by the family to raise funds, all in order to hire a private investigator to find the Lindbergh baby's kidnappers. This diamond did the rounds for decades. More tragedies took place until eventually it was given to the Smithsonian. This was not without controversy either, as it would then be owned by America, and people feared that it would curse the entire country. This was the 1950s after all, and well, nothing bad has happened since then, right? Number 11. King Tutankhamun's Tomb one of the most famously cursed ancient treasures of all time was the tomb of Tutankhamun. Discovered on November the 4th of 1922 by a team of archaeologists led by Howard Carter, the long-lost tomb of the ancient Egyptian pharaoh had been left undisturbed for almost 3,000 years. When the tomb was opened and entered by Carter and his team, rumors then began circulating that the curse of the pharaoh would befall all who disturbed the boy king's resting place. Now I wonder, what truth could there have been in this curse? As it 
happens, there were some sudden deaths reported amongst those who were involved in the opening of the tomb, and this has further fueled the legend of King Tut's curse. Lord Carnivon, the guy who had financed Carter's expedition to seek out the treasures and excavate in the Valley of the Kings, would meet an untimely end in March of 1923. His death was long considered mysterious, but the thing that isn't reported is that he had also suffered from poor health for many years before and appears to have died from malaria or something similar after arriving in Egypt. Not so much evidence of a curse. Then there were other catastrophes that befell people that were involved in the excavation. Howard Carter himself gave his friend Sir Bruce Ingham a paperweight, which contained a mummified hand, and then this unfortunate chap's house burned down. He tried to rebuild it, and it was immediately flooded. An American financier visited the tomb in 1923, only to fall sick immediately afterwards and then died a few months later. Another archaeologist was so struck with fear of the mummy's curse and the fact that it was offing people all around him that he took his own life, allegedly citing the curse as his reason. Over and over again, countless adjacent individuals and their families would suffer earlier violent deaths, but Carter, the man who had first opened the tomb, was actually spared. He lived to the ripe old age of 64 four and then died of cancer. There's a theory that Carter himself actually began the rumor of the curse of the pharaoh. It seems that in order to control the media frenzy around the discovery, he concocted the story in order to keep all the hordes at bay. But that's just what people covering up an evil supernatural curse would say now, isn't it? Number 10. Iceman Otzi Otzi the Iceman is a very well-known and preserved mummy that would be discovered in the Italian Alps in 1991. The mummified human remains are estimated to be about 5,300 years old, and despite the age, they contain lots of lovely, exciting science-based information about how people may have lived during that time. The mummy has continued to attract interest from scientists and the wider public ever since his discovery. He's been studied in great depth over that time and has relinquished secrets to those who have wanted to follow the clues. He was actually discovered by German hikers who were having a lovely afternoon hiking along a mountain path when suddenly they happened upon the top half of old Otzi just sticking out of the ice. Now, now, that would probably make you jump, surely. It's believed that Otzi probably died from loss of blood after being struck by an arrow. If you want to have a look at this shriveled old wrinkly ice mummy, well, Otzi is on display in Italy's South Tyrol Museum of Archaeology, you know, if you like that sort of thing. Whether this remarkable discovery is actually cursed or not is a matter of opinion, but you know, wherever there's a mummy, there's someone with a notion that there is a curse. For the most part, it's just been a find of extraordinary interest for understanding the history of humanity. Number 9. Robert the Doll this is the classic case of a so-called cursed doll. Robert the doll is a straw-filled doll that belonged to a boy named Robert Otto. It was allegedly given to him by a nanny who was fired by his family, but who can really say? Anyways, Robert, the boy, was always with Robert, the doll, but other people in the household were soon aware that apparently there were lots of signs that the doll might have been evil. The family claimed to have seen strange things and would often hear the boy having conversations with himself, but with two very different voices. The furniture in the child's room was often in disarray, and the family blamed the doll and put it in the attic. But the legend says that the doll brought misfortunes on Robert and his family even long after he had grown up. Number 8. Surrey Ghost Car well, this is a weird one. The A3 highway in Surrey in England is a hotspot for collisions, so when Surrey police received multiple calls that stated that a car had been seen going off the road and crashing, it seemed as though it were just business as usual. But when they arrived at the reported crash scene, they found absolutely no evidence of a recent crash at all. It was just 60 feet away that they came across the wreckage of a vehicle with a body inside, except that this crash must have happened five months earlier given the condition of the victim. So had people seen a ghost car or was it a replay of the event from months beforehand? Whatever happened here, there's no doubt that it's a bit of a head scratcher. Number 7. Dybbuk Box The Dybbuk Box is a kind of wine cabinet that's claimed to be haunted by a Dybbuk, 
A dibbuk is a malevolent spirit from Jewish mythology that's able to possess a host body, or, as it would seem, a wine cabinet. This is another one of those items that was found on eBay with an especially elaborate description. The seller of the item painted quite the picture with the description of the haunted box. It's all utter nonsense, of course, but it is enough to inspire the 2012 horror movie The Possession. So there you go, sling up an old jug. Or perhaps a weird-looking hat on eBay, call it haunted, make up an exciting backstory, and maybe get a movie deal. You just never know. Number 6. Bazano Vase Well, this is a weird one in and of itself. It's the story of a cursed object, a vase to be precise, and it's believed that anyone who owned it would suffer from the terrible curse that was placed upon the vase. The thing is, though, nobody actually knows why it was cursed. Oh, and also, nobody knows where it is or if it actually even exists. The whole thing's kind of a myth in its own right. The stories of the cursed Bazano vase are what holds the whole mystery together. But there are no actual eyewitness accounts of the physical vase, only the tales of its murderous powers. Told you it was kind of weird. This alleged 15th century object was believed to have originally been crafted and given as a wedding gift, presumably to a delighted couple who were thrilled to receive a curse on their happiest of days. Anyways, the details then go from fuzzy to downright murky, and then they plunge into complete darkness. All we know is that it is a vase that may or may not exist, and if it does, well, then it's cursed. And that's it. The end. Number 5. The Crying Boy Painting this mass-produced print of The Crying Boy by Italian artist Giovanni Bragolin is another one of these so-called cursed paintings. That stalwart of truth and values, <clears throat> The Sun newspaper in the UK, would publish an article in 1985 in which it stated that a fireman claimed to have found these same prints in multiple homes that had burned down. The houses were obliterated, but the prints themselves remained resistant to the flames. They were made of especially robust fire-repelling stuff, I would think. Or was there something creepier at work here? Some people thought so, and a story then began to circulate that the child in the picture was himself also a victim of a house fire. Oh, what a coincidence. Number 4. The Women from Lem Statue when they were first unearthed in a place called Lem in Cyprus in 1878, the women from Lem were simply seen as a curious object of the ancient past that had been carved from limestone and it's believed to date from around 3500 BC. That simple understanding began to change when these statues started to be associated with all kinds of ill doings. The women from Lim has passed through the hands of at least four different families since being discovered, and the legend goes that all of them died within a few short years of owning the carvings. As if that were not scary enough, when the last remaining members of the final family to have possession of it decided they would prefer not to play fast and loose with their lives and donated it to a museum, it seems to have got up to its old tricks again. The curator at the Royal Scottish Museum in Edinburgh died within a year of handling the statue. So cursed or coincidence? Tell me what you think in the comments down below. Number 3. Petch Island Curse Petch Island is a tiny little uninhabited Canadian island in the Detroit River. Back at the end of the 18th century, a French-Canadian family established a homestead there, and they lived peacefully for many years. But in 1883, that would all change. The family became embroiled in a property feud with a businessman who tried to force them to leave. When they eventually did, one of the families believed to have placed a curse on the island, in which she stated that no one will ever do anything with the island. The businessman then swooped into the space, building a huge mansion, but the curse seems to have been relatively effective because he and his family all died soon after, and the island has remained uninhabited ever since. Number 2. Terracotta Army 
No doubt that when this army, known as the Terracotta Warriors, would first be discovered, it likely made those that found them recoil in fear. It must have been a spooky sight indeed when, in 1974, a couple of farmers found some pottery-like pieces on the ground and then went to investigate further. This is when the tomb of China's first emperor would be uncovered, and as it was opened, it would reveal an army of life-size sculptures. Thousands of warriors and horses depicted in terracotta stand guard over the ancient tomb. They were all sporting full armor and stand in a particularly menacing battle formation facing the east, as this would be the direction that the emperor's enemies would come from. Incredibly, each of the sculptures is an individual. They have different facial features, hairstyles, and their ranks are made evident by their headgear. Each statue stands at about 6 feet tall, weighing up to 600 pounds, but the reason that archaeologists believe that these terracotta warriors were buried in this tomb is the ancient Chinese tradition of the afterlife. 3,000 years ago, the people of ancient China believed that when they died, they would exist in the afterlife, so the wealthy and those of nobility of China wanted to take with them the things they would need in the next world. That would also include their servants. Yes, there was a tradition of burying the still living servants of royalty with them when they died. It's horrifying and kind of impractical. So when the emperor died, I imagine it was likely to be really inconvenient if all of the best soldiers also had to go with him. So the solution appears to have been to replace the living, breathing bodies with pottery depictions. No doubt the army breathed a collective sigh of relief. Number 1. Haunted Belcourt Castle Chairs The Belcourt Castle in Newport, Rhode Island has a bit of a reputation. It's believed by many to be one of America's most haunted destinations. The former summer residence has a ballroom, which is most associated with the all spookily happening things, and the epicenter of what the haunted stuff seems to be are the chairs. It's always the chairs, isn't it? Like ghosts are just obsessed with seating. But the reports are compelling. Many visitors have felt feeling chills in their spines, and even when they stand near a chair, others have strange sensations moving over their hands. The best and probably funniest to witness are the visitors who have allegedly been forcibly ejected from their seats by something that's unseen. That one is extra naughty. But whatever is possessing the chairs, or just really into rearranging the furniture in the first place, we still need to ask the question, what the actual heck is it with ghosts and chairs? Do they have an incessant need for extra seating? Are they all obsessive about the exact positioning of said seats? And why are they always chucking chairs about? These are important questions, and I for one would really appreciate your answers. That's all from this list of so-called cursed objects. What did you think of all this supernatural business? And do you even believe in curses? As always, let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Be sure to check out the other cool stuff that's showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.